Hey everybody, so when you think of the Santa Fe Railroad, what paint scheme comes to mind? Well, I'm willing to bet that for most of you, it's this one. This is the Santa Fe War Bonnet paint scheme. And in my opinion, this is one of the most, if not the most beautiful paint scheme in all of American railroading. And it was certainly made famous in the O-Gage world by Lionel when they started bringing out their Santa Fe War Bonnet F units in 1948. And I've actually got something similar to that right here. This is a Lionel 2343 from 1950. It's not in the best shape, but you get the idea. It's an absolutely gorgeous paint scheme, and it's no wonder it was a big hit. Well, the Santa Fe had some other bonnet paint schemes, and one of them was the yellow bonnet paint scheme. And here it is. And I've actually got two of these. This is a Santa Fe Yellow Bonnet F7AA set. It's made by Lionel, and we're gonna check it out right now on Eric's Trains. All right, the Santa Fe Yellow Bonnet F7s. Now, from what I understand, these alternate paint schemes for the Santa Fe sort of got going in the early 70s and it's a little confusing to read about but apparently it had to do with the arrival of Amtrak and because Amtrak was taking over everybody's passenger service the Santa Fe wanted to differentiate between the locomotives they used for freight service and the locomotives they leased to Amtrak to use for passenger service and so they started experimenting with alternate paint schemes of the war bonnet like the yellow bonnet and also the blue bonnet on it. And even within the yellow bonnet and the blue bonnet paint schemes, there were several variations. So they were kind of making it up as they went along and experimenting and throwing stuff to the wall to see what stuck. And the result was lots of cool variations on the Santa Fe paint scheme, which of course was very exciting for fans of the Santa Fe. And as much as I love the red war bonnet paint scheme, I really like it when Lionel and others do some of these alternate paint schemes because they just look really cool. So Lionel offered the yellow bonnet F7AA set in their 2022 Volume 1 catalog, along with four other road names. So they did Santa Fe, Lehigh Valley, Sioux Line, Union Pacific, and Southern Pacific. And for each road name, they did an AA set like we have here that has two powered units, one with sound. And then they did a separate sale powered B unit and a separate sale non-powered super base B unit. So if you get everything, you'll end up with an ABBA set. Now, I don't have the B units here because I actually did not order these when they came out. I had to pass them up. I really wanted them, but I had to pass them up in favor of the ACNW F9 set on the next page of the catalog. I had to fit everything into a budget and I had to take the Santa Fe F7s off the list. And by the way, I will be reviewing the ACNW F9 set as soon as all of the matching passenger cars arrive. But I hope to add those B units at some time in the future. However, if you want to see what those B units are like, check out the Alaska F7 set review that I did back in December of 2022. They're exactly the same. Stats wise, each of these A units measure in at right at 12 and a half inches long. The combined length of the two A units together is just over 25 inches. The weight of the front A unit, that's the one that has the sound system, is 3 pounds 14 ounces. The rear A unit weighs 3 pounds 13 ounces. And of course, they have a combined weight of 7 pounds 11 ounces. When tested, each of these A units produced 1 pound 8 ounces of pulling power, but when teamed together, they produced 3 pounds 15 ounces of pulling power, which is fantastic. That basically means you can pull whatever you want with these. And these units are very friendly to those with small layouts with tight... Oh, there's, there's Chessie. <laughs> well, Chessie's in the shot and he wants me to tell you that these units are very friendly to those with small layouts with tight curves because the minimum required curve needed to operate these locomotives is 031. Isn't that right, Chessie? And as you'd expect, each of these units has two motors, one mounted above each truck. On both units, you've got Legacy Command. On the front unit, you've got Legacy Rail Sounds. Both units have fan-driven smoke units, all LED lighting, and of course, they have Bluetooth on board. Going in for some close-up shots, man, the nose of this thing just looks fantastic. Whether it's the red war bonnet, the yellow bonnet, or the blue bonnet, the front of a Santa Fe F unit never gets old. And speaking of attractive Santa Fe noses, how about this shot? And man, look how good that looks up close. We've got add-on metal grab irons on either side of the headlight. We've got an operating Mars light above that, lighted number boards, operating marker lights, all these add-on grab irons on top of the nose, 
add-on wipers. In the cab there are two hand-painted crew figures, the doors to the cab open, and there are add-on grab irons on either side of the cab doors as well, and really nice ladder and step detail leading up to that cab door. Now they've got the little holes on either side of the cab where you would put those flags, those little white flags. I didn't see any in the box, however, if you have some, you could put those in those holes. And man, as we move down the side of the A unit, it looks amazing. We've got these metal grills up here, fantastic paint job as you can see. Got the nice Santa Fe and that little scanner there for the line side scanners. We've got some hand painted detailing on the fuel tank, and then we've got these porthole windows. The porthole windows are blacked out, which is a good thing that keeps you from seeing all the electronics and wires behind them. The truck side frames are nicely detailed. Now, as you can see on the A units, the truck side frames are black. However, on the separate sale B units, the truck side frames are silver, which was a weird thing to see. And you might think that's a mistake. You know, why did Lionel make the A units have black trucks and the B units have silver trucks? But actually, I think that might be more accurate than you think. Looking at pictures from the early 70s, you know, like I said, the Santa Fe was experimenting with all sorts of different paint schemes on the locomotives and the trucks as well. And so... From what I can see, some of the F units did have black trucks and some had silver trucks. And let's not forget that the 70s was the start of the rainbow era for Amtrak, where you had all sorts of mismatched locomotives running together. So, yeah, it may not look pretty to have mismatched trucks, but it may be more accurate than you think. Now, I'm sure that some people will want to repaint the trucks if they get the matching B units, and that's fine, but I'm going to leave these the way they are. And if you do get the B units and you do want to repaint the trucks, I would suggest repainting them all black, because from the photos I've seen, most of these yellow bonded F units had black trucks, not silver. I could be wrong, but that's the way it looks in the photos that I've seen. And here's a look at the back of one of these A units. They've got a nice diaphragm going on here. There's a door that opens up, which is nice. And one thing I like about these Lionel F units is the little reverse light that's here that lights up when you put the locomotive into reverse. Here's a look at the gap between the two A units and because of the close coupling, it looks nice. On the roof of the lead A unit, the one with motors and sound, we've got this little panel that can be removed to reveal some controls for the locomotive. Now these three here are pretty typical. You've got run program, Bluetooth on off, and smoke unit on off. But these here, you've got signals on and off and dialogue on and off. These can be used to enable or disable the signals, bell, horn, stuff like that, and the dialogue, crew talk sounds and the like. And the reason they have these is that if you get one of the matching B units, in particular the non-powered super bass unit, well, that unit has sounds as well, including signals and dialogue. And so with these switches here and the ones on the super bass unit, you can designate which unit is going to make the signal sounds and which unit is going to make the dialogue sounds. Now, what I usually do is if I'm running this A unit with one of these super bass units, I'll have the signals and the dialogue come from this lead unit and then disable them on the super bass B unit. So this just gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. You can decide which sound effects come from which unit in your consist. And then on the other A unit, the one without sound, we've got the traditional setup where you've just got the run program switch, Bluetooth on off, and smoke on and off. Here's a look at the underside of one of these A units. We've got four pickup rollers, two per truck. So we've got nice solid electrical contact for that center rail. All axles are driven. There are two traction tires on the inner axle of each truck for a total of four. The speaker for the sound system is right here. Obviously on the trailing A unit there is no speaker because there is no sound system. And then right here we've got the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track should you choose to use one. And for those of you who like seeing these kind of things, here's what the inside of this locomotive looks like. Here's the cab. We've got one of the crew figures here. And it's actually surprisingly detailed. I mean, look at the underside of that chair. You're never going to see that, but wow, that's pretty cool. And then we've got the two flywheel motors, one above each truck. There's the antenna for the legacy system. And then below that, we've got the board for legacy control, Bluetooth, and sound. Below that, we've got the speaker box for the sound system. There's the smoke unit. There's the little motor for the smoke unit. And the smoke comes up through this little funnel thing to each of the two smokestacks. 
Okay, the last thing we're going to do before we start this thing up is BFIMO. Best feature in my opinion? Well, that's a no-brainer this time around. I absolutely love this yellow bonnet paint scheme. It looks fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and start these things up. This is the dispatcher. Starter up. Stand by to pull. Over. Okay, let's get to work. Out. All right, so here are the five available horns. And here are the five available bells. And finally, here's a sampling of some of the crew talk sounds. Call the flight man. Let's get going. They hold the sighting until 44 clears. Then we can take the main. He should be through any minute. Dispatcher, we are ready to depart. Can we pull? Over. Hold. Hold for signal indication. Out. Six. One three seven six to mobile post. Seven seven seven. Three zero seven seven on the main track. Coast of. This warrant has one box checked. Number two. Over. Power. Station work complete and ready to head east. Can I pull?
All right, so there you have it, the Lionel Santa Fe Yellow Bonnet F7AA set. I was really glad that Legacy Station had one of these on hand because I really regretted not ordering them in the first place. And hopefully at some point, like I said, I'll be able to add the matching B units. Now, if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, the retail price on the AA set is right at $1,200. Yeah, things have gotten crazy expensive these days. The powered B unit has a retail price right at $600. And the non-powered super base unit has a retail price right at $550. Now keep in mind those are full retail prices. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a bit of a discount off those retail prices. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra super big thank you goes out to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of this video. And finally, if you'd like to buy some Eric's Trains merchandise, if you look below this video, you should see a listing of some Eric's Train stuff. If you click on those, it'll go to my store, and there's all sorts of stuff there. T-shirts, cups, phone cases, the works. Anyway, that does it for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. comes Chessie <laughs> interrupting my shot hey